Welcome back to the channel, y'all. It is your hostess with the mostest, Queen T, Tiffy A, aka at the dot rising star on Instagram and TikTok. And we are back with our series celebrating queens for different things. And today we have a very, very, very special queen with us. So, would you mind telling us what your name is, our special queen? No problem. My name is Heather Johnson, and I am the visionary of It's a She Thing Benefit Weekend. And she is the acronym for Sharing Hope and Experiences, which is what we thrive on during this event. It's been an event that we've had since 2012, so this is our 11th year. Oh wow, so this is 11 years? Mm -hmm. Happy 11 year anniversary! Okay, so what inspired you to do It's a She Thing? So originally my mom um, was a breast cancer survivor and she was in remission and I always wanted to do something to give back mm -hmm. and what better way to give back than to host an event to recognize those people who have experienced it. Um, she was actually my first guest speaker. Oh, okay. That started in 2012. Um, fast forward to 2021, we lost my mom to cancer. She passed from brain cancer and liver cancer. I'm so sorry. And um, it kind of gave the event another meaning for me. Um, so we weren't just doing it, you know, to bring awareness. But at that point, it became I'm doing this, you know, in honor of my mom. Personally, I didn't want to keep going, but I knew that she would want me to. So that was the reason why I kept going, and I kept doing it. Um, I made a post today, I was saying, you know, about being obedient. Um, you have to give up your personal feelings to get the job done. Because at the end of the day, it's not about you anymore. So, um, I had to tell. I have to tell myself that because I go through a range of emotions. Mind you, I just lost her in 2021, so it's still fresh. Yeah, it's still fresh. Um, I miss her deeply, but the best way that I can honor her is through this, through my giving, through my living through showing people what she has given me and so um this is what motivates me to continue to do this event year in and year out and again like i said this is our 11th year so i'm excited we had an awesome time tonight um we did our kickoff which is the pre the prelude um for the actual brunch where we do the honors um, so we take our time and we honor um everyday citizens um, we honor medical professionals, we honor um, nurses, we honor caregivers because these are family members that are selfless in saying, hey, I'm going to take on the burden of making sure that you get to these doctor's appointments, that you see these doctors, and if you have surgery, I'm right there with you. I'm going to walk with you through this thing. And um, they never get the recognition. You know, we know, yeah, these people are in practice. These people are on these floors in these hospitals. But you never hear them getting their flowers. And that's what we do. We give them their flowers. You know, to just to say thank you for what you do. Because it really is a labor of love. We understand you went to school, we understand you got the accolades, we understand you got the degrees, you got the background, and you have the fortitude to do these things. However, who's saying thank you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what tangibly do you have to show for that? And that's what we, we do. We honor these people, and they have something to show for that. Yeah. Um, because we do present them with an award. And that's, that's and something so. then to, yeah, because I feel like, like you said, it's something that can be overlooked, very Definitely. much overlooked. Yeah. Even though it's a necessity, you know you need this person. It's like, yep. It's so once you check out of the hospital, that's kind of you know, that's your your end to you know. And then the great thing about our honorees, patients are the ones who are nominating these people. Oh. They're doctors. They're nurses. Sisters, mothers, brothers, cousins are the ones that are nominating these caregivers. So it's not me. Mm -hmm. I have no hand in that. All I do is put it out, hey, submissions are open. 
and we get the submission. It's been a great, great thing, and this event has grown and spawned like so much. It's just taking on life of its own because, like I said, it's so not about us, not about me, but these people, these individual people that we can tell thank you in a more personable way, in a more memorable way that they can, you know, they can really and truly feel that, hey, what I'm doing is making a difference. And we want them to know that even though I lost my mom, there was still a great staff of medical professionals who aided in the care for her up until, you know, we decided to put her on hospice. It matters, and, and those people, they need to be acknowledged. And this is what we do. We celebrate take that time, it. right? Mm -hmm. We take that time and we acknowledge them, we, we celebrate them, we give them their flowers. In a group setting amongst their peers. Because like I say, we have survivors, we have caregivers. A lot of the previous honorees and a lot of the previous guest speakers, they still continue to contribute and attend this event. One of the guest speakers that is speaking tomorrow is actually a breast cancer survivor and a previous, um, she was like one of our, I want to say 2017 was her very first time when she spoke at the event and um, her life has come full circle because she actually ended up going through breast cancer. Mm. So yeah, she's going to be our keynote speaker tomorrow. Okay, and you host it in uh, the same the same week every year. Same yeah, place. same same week every year for the past few years. We've had it in the same location. Next year, we'll probably host it in a bigger venue to accommodate more people to attend. But um, this is where we've been able to to do this consistently, and not of my own. Yes, I. Blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of this has been out of pocket. A lot of it has also been through sponsors, through donations, through people that just say, hey, I see what you're doing. I may not be able to make it, but I'm going to give you X, Y, Z. To help. Yeah, to help. So a lot of those things, you know, and I don't want those things to go unnoticed because, no, I'm not. I'm, thankfully, I'm at a place now where I'm not doing it alone. Initially, I was, but thankfully, I'm at a place now where I have people who see the effort, who see the work, who see what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish, and they are willing to contribute. That is a beautiful thing. And it's Albany, Georgia. Yeah. And what weekend, because we want people to come, we want to bring more people. So when should I tell my people to show up next year? So next year, um, we do, we are on Facebook. We do have a page. It's, it's the page is It's a She Thing on Facebook. Um, if you can't find it, you can always look me up. My name is Heather Johnson. Um, you can go from my page in, in the About section and click the link to get to the actual page. All information for the upcoming event is always listed there. We always have an um, event page that we create as well. So we make sure that we most times um, advertise about three months out. Mm -hmm. So, um, and a lot of people kind of go ahead, they know when it's coming up, they know when it's happening, they're ready when we post, and it, it nine times out of ten most years, and this year is no different, we, we always sell out. Mm -hmm. So, and, it, and we, we intentionally make it an uh, intimate situation. So we don't have three and four hundred tickets. Mm -hmm. We limit it to, well right now we lim limit it to these past years, 150. But next year, like I said, we are going to expand it. But again, it will be still an intimate situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, you know, just something that we chose to do. So I'm telling y'all now, <laughs> I'm going to put the information down in the description down below when you see this video so that you can find Miss Heather. But y'all better get y'all tickets when she say get your tickets because yeah. I'm going to get mine. Right. And if you don't get it in time, baby, you won't be here to shake your behind. Okay, you hear the song? <laughs> you just won't be getting down with us. Now, what else would you say that you want everybody to know about? Um... It's a she thing. I would say y'all should probably know that it's a male and female event. It is. And so a lot of people open. question that. But we have males and females in attendance. I'm not big on titles. I'm one of those people. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so not big on titles. I appreciate everyone who attends. It doesn't matter your pay grade. It doesn't matter what you make. 
Um, if you can attend, we welcome you to come because I can only tell you that it is an experience like no other. And not just because it's my event. I've been blessed to be in a situation to be in a position to see this event unfold from the humble beginnings. And I'm telling you, there's nothing like being here invested in, in the room. So um, it's one thing to say I heard about it, but it's another thing to say I was there. So that's, you know, I always encourage people if you can come, come because we love meets you at the door. Like the energy here is unmatched and it's welcoming. And I promise you, if you didn't know about cancer, the effects of cancer, what we as a community should do to be proactive in that, this is a great place to be because we never feel like it's for us until it's for us. Mm-hmm. So we don't think it affects us until it affects us. It affects us, us right? until it shows up at your doorstep. Right? And so I never imagined, we could have imagined in a million years that I would at 16 years old um, be getting a mammogram. I've been getting mammograms since I was 16. Oh, wow. And typically you're not scheduled as a woman to get a mammogram until you're in your late 20s. And probably later than that, but I started getting my mammograms at the age of 16 due to my mom having breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And then now that she passed from brain cancer and liver cancer, there are other tests that me and my siblings are having to undergo um, just to see if it's hereditary. Hereditary to protect yourself. Right. So To get ahead of it now. Exactly. So it's very important that we are educated and that we know um what's going on with us health wise not just annual health exams but we're gonna have to take the initiative to look because a lot of times with us and in our community um we don't know until it's too late and they say the best protection is early detection right. so get Definitely. yourself tested y'all and i i'm listen i ain't gonna lie to y'all i need to go get myself tested too i'm sitting here listening to this and i'm like Y'all, it's Women's History Month. How many ladies have gone and gotten y'all breasts checked? Like, are we checking ourselves? Are we taking care of ourselves? That taps into self-love, ladies. So that's something I feel like we all need to grow from and all need to hear. And what she's saying is real, y'all. Like, I missed the event tonight. I came real late. I'm from Tallahassee. Well, I'm not from Tallahassee. Y'all know I'm Miami. We ain't going to say that I'm from Tally. (laughs) But I did go to Albany Middle School. So y'all know I, yes, I was an Indian. I had some Indian bucks. Okay. My my auntie and my uncle up here. Y'all, if I tell y'all, my I auntie went Albany Middle, and okay. I graduated from Albany. My auntie now. is Trisha Pollock. Okay. My uncle is Roderick Pollock. Coach Pollock. Coach Pollock. Exactly. That's why I was he like, y'all going. Me. Y'all. Y- y- everybody know them because my auntie used to teach, Yay. and I think now she's a counselor up here. So that's why I was like, I told you before we got here. I was like, oh gotcha. no, they went to ASU. I was like, I I didn't know ASU was a HBCU because I'm mm-hmm. I'm a Rattler. I told yeah. you. I had no idea. Otherwise, yeah. I would have probably came up here and just lived yeah. in their house and went to school because I was like I just want to go to HBCU yeah. but nobody is better than the Marching 100 y'all <laughs> don't ever try to strike with us okay I'm saying that because can you, you want to come in the camera real quick so I can give you a shout out um hastily just because I want to say he played trumpet in that other band What's that? What's sex, what's the, what's the, oh, and alto sex. The greatest of the greatest. <laughs> the marching wildcat. He's a wildcat, wildcat. but y'all know Come we. Come on, Bethune. Okay, you Come know, outside. but you know we love we love all of the HBCUs, yeah, so we love, yeah, we love it. We loving it. We loving it. Um, but this is this is so beautiful, so beautiful. What else would you like us to learn? Oh wait, hold up, wait before I go. I know I ain't supposed to be doing too much shopping because this is supposed to be an interview about you, but I'm sharing about me. What's what that? I was saying. The honesty that she giving y'all when I say the welcoming, we late, like I said, but she came in. She was, I was like, I'm, I'm just looking for you. I, I'm, I'm kind of scared. I don't, I don't came all the way from my house, and I, I just want to talk to you. And she like, hey, sis, we good, we good, it's cool, it's cool. So what I, I'm just trying to give y'all the moment right now, cause my brain was finna get. Y'all know how I get when I start talking. But what I was trying to get here for y'all was the fact that she is very, she is very much sis, very, like, very much sis. Like immediately came and became family. Okay, and that's why I'm like, you know, we talk a little crap about BSU, but. In reality, HBCU to HBCU, it is our community, y'all. We really got to wake up. We really got to be more educated. Come on now. We got degrees. Why are we walking around acting like we don't know stuff? We know a lot. And like she said, early detection. But 
if we're talking brain cancer and other cancers, we need to know about these other tests. So te- yeah. can you tell us about these other tests? Because this might be something that could save somebody's life somewhere on my page. So they, they have what they call a, um, it's like a generational thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you basically go to the, you can you can ask your, your um, we call primary care physician, your PCP, mm-hmm. um, to refer you. Okay. And they can refer you so that you can get this testing done. They will ask you, do you have a history of cancer in your family? And of mm-hmm. course, because I do, um, they'll point me in the right direction on where um, I need to go in as far as hematology, oncology, whatever. And they run these tests. And it's basically like a strand test, um, genealogy, as far as trying to see and trace it and see if you have any of those um, those cancer cells or carrier if you're a carrier carrier of those cancers like this brain cancer literally came out of nowhere one day my mom was complaining of a headache and my mom was a joker so she was like oh y'all my head's hurting so bad like oh i can't even hardly see y'all like i'm like stop playing like Mm -hmm. she was and she was like no for real like my head is hurting for real Two weeks went by and she was still talking about her headache and i said well mama if your head is hurting that bad go to the doctor she went to the doctor she texted me and she was like um i got tests ran deal i'll let you all know when the test come back okay um test results came back she texted me when the results came back it's cancer and i kid you not that was april when they diagnosed my mom with 2021 my mom was gone august 2021 it happened just like that. Um, she went through losing her sight. Um, and my mom was a very independent person. She did not like, you know, she wanted to help herself. Like, she didn't want, it was a struggle for her to depend on us to do things for her. Um, and my father, you know, he was there supporting but again you know it's something about a strong woman Mm -hmm. you know when they're losing certain things they feel helpless or incapacitated where you know it kind of almost shameful to them to not be able to do for themselves and so that's what we went through and um like i said it happened super fast Uh, in a matter of four months my mom was gone and um, she succumbed to liver cancer because once it spread to her liver, then it literally, they called us on a Wednesday. Um, they told us there's nothing else that we can do. We brought her home on a Thursday. My mom passed that Sunday morning. So, yeah, it, it's, it's really a serious matter. And so, you know, I I strongly urge us as a community to get more involved and inquisitive about um, these things, these diseases, these things that truly and utterly really, really, really affect us because, um, you know, it's real and it's not just our counterparts or um, the fairer skin, it's us mm-hmm. that it's taken out at an alarming rate because we don't know. So. Oh my God. Okay, so taking that in, I also want to say from my perspective, just sharing my cancer story. Ladies, or just black community in general, Mm -hmm. I don't know where we coming from with this, but my grandmother went through breast cancer entirely on her own, did not tell anybody in the family what was going on. None of us knew what was going on. We didn't know that she had breast cancer until she was in remission and beat breast cancer and decided to share it with the family. So my words to us, ladies, women, gentlemen, black community, can we not be so strong? Can we learn to lead on one another? Can we open up our hearts and our consciousness to understand that we are humans and we were sent here for one another? And your family loves you, your friends love you, and we will be hurt if we lose you. So open up your mouth so that we can help you, okay? And I'm saying this as humbly and as softly and as gently as possible, but I'm also saying this as forcefully as possible, like a thump in the forehead. Like really hear me when I say, you are not alone. And there's no reason to make yourself be alone through something that scary. It's scary, y'all. Like you about to lose your life. You you my heart right now heavy just talking about it. Don't go through that alone. Please hear my words. 
please hear her words. Please hear the pain in the world. Look, the, the music even went off. Mm. The point had to be made. Mm. Don't do it alone. Please don't do it alone. What else would you like us to learn, sis? Just know that, um, like like you say, we're it's not a alone thing because I promise you there's somebody else with a similar story, similar circumstance that can relate. Even if they don't understand, they can relate. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell everybody, even with the passing of my mom, I tell you, I, I hear other people that lose their parents to cancer. I'll never understand, but I can always relate because your story is in my story. We just have similarities. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think that we need to realize that it's just not a me thing or you thing. It's a us thing. A we thing. And a we thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to really, really, really tap into making sure that we are seeing about ourselves holistically and not just these certain areas that they told you were angry, you need to go see your doctor for this, or check up. Um, women, you need to go and make sure you have your um, your OBGYN for your mammograms. Yes. It's way deeper than that. So, you know, you just, you would be overlooking, you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you don't just ensure that you are being thorough because you don't know what you're overlooking. You don't know what you're, you know, what you're, what you could have prevented or what you could have caught, kind of headed off mm -hmm. by getting it, you know, before it became something that was early detection. Right. Exactly. All right, y'all, y'all, you hearing it? The again, what we done heard for a long time. Just a reminder and update for you: your best protection is early detection. Definitely. Okay. And that's in everything. So we are getting tested this year and we are getting more tests this year and we are going to keep that going for the years to come because in self-love, a part of that is taking care of your health. Definitely. Definitely. And you can't do that if you aren't checking in with the health professionals. Okay. Because I know I don't like going to the hospital. I ain't going to lie to y'all. <laughs> I, ha I Nobody hate does, it. But it's necessary. But I got the physical every year, yeah. so I could be in marching band. And yeah. listen, we weren't talking about marching 100 without me getting a physical. It's necessary. So the necessity is still here. Whether you in school, whether you out of school, it's not just about your kids. It's not just about your parents. It's about you too. And if you know you're doing it, make sure the rest of your people are doing it too. Because I mean, living a long life alone, <laughs> that ain't gonna be fun for you either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not at all. All right. Any other closing thoughts before we get out of no, here? No, I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, I thank you guys for just considering me to be able to sit with you and share this event and share my a little bit of my story, a little bit of my background concerning this event. Because again, um, this stopped being about me a long time ago. Um, I honestly it was never about me. It was always about my mom and doing something for her. Um, so that, you know, she would know that I wanted to um, give some sort of insight and initiative to the cause. And my prayer has been since losing her is that, you know, I pray that she's proud with the work that we're doing, the work that we're, you know, putting sure into this is. event. Um, and that's, that's my only hope. Um, and again, like I said, I thank you guys for just your time because um, most times we don't get that back. But... I'm glad that you all thought it not robbery to come and allow yourselves to be um, in this space. So I do appreciate you all for that. Well, thank, I'm th thank you, because I was definitely in the parking lot saying I'm late. People okay. packing up. It's okay. I was like, okay. listen, but I want to see. And yeah, you was like, let's go in. I was like, and I want to. I was like, we already here. Right. Like, why? It's okay. Why, why miss it? I was like, God wanted this opportunity. Because even, even down to when I checked my bank account and the money wasn't there, I told you, a text message came through on TikTok where somebody was like, hey, post, post my music in the background on one of your videos. I'll pay you $50. I said, that $50 from God, God wants you to go. Get your <laughs> Then go right. go meet who you supposed to meet let that be a message to all of y'all listen qu i told y'all i told y'all when i fell off i told y'all everything was going on with my eyeball i can open up my eyeball i'll show y'all that later but i told y'all when i came back it was going to be about something phenomenal and you see i said god was going to put some stuff in place this came to place out of the blue i swear to god because I, I like i said y'all wait to the end of the video i'm gonna do some screenshots and i'm gonna just put them in i'll probably put it over this screen because we got enough room but 
Yo, God is doing a work in this world. Yeah. And this is the year for you to not only get up and be filled with cheer so you could go and do what you got to do, but take care of you so that you can continue to do what you got to do. Because, like I said, I almost, them emotions, Mm -mm, I was going to cry in my bed all day. I do want to say this um, for those that are watching and and catching this. um, I don't know who this is for, but. I learned a long time ago that there's no failure in fear. That's for me. You can talk yourself out of so much, but the failure is not in in being fearful. The failure is not doing. The failure is when you don't do anything. When you step out and you do it in spite of, um, and that's a bigger thing and a testament to your faith. Because the word is the word, you know, faith without works is dead. And if you believe, you can always step into those places blindly. And you can believe that those things and call those things which are not to be, you know. And it's going to be because of your faith. If you don't take that step, how will you know? And this event is a product of faith because when I started this event I knew nothing about hosting an event of this magnitude come on I had not one blueprint not one insight not one this is what you do tutorial I was literally using my faith in my heart yeah because I'm thinking I'm like 11 years ago uh, YouTube wasn't trying to teach you like that YouTube wasn't like how to how to how to how to what no YouTube (laughs) like that YouTube was Jenna Marbles rants that's what I was watching and so I just encourage people (laughs) to 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 be fearless you know in those things if you have the option to do do it if you have the worst thing that you can do is to listen to people to tell you that you're crazy and to listen to people that tell you it's not gonna work and to and to be the one to say well they said you know because those same people are going to be saying something else when you succeed and when you've done it and when you've accomplished it so i always encourage y'all watching me now I always encourage people to to go forward. Hey, you got your hair short. I was gonna flick your hair. Too. <laughs> I was finna. I was finna be like, you watching her? <laughs> we, listen, she here. Flip this. <laughs> but yeah, just I encourage people to do it. I'm the, I'm the pusher. Yeah. In my group, I'm always a pusher. I always encourage people to do and go, and and see and live because at the end of the day, when when these when this life ends. I mean, what will we have to show for it versus outside of what we've done? Mm-hmm. Not what we thought about doing, what we've done. So, that's. Y'all, I don't want this night to end. I'm just <laughs> praying to God. Gonna... Right. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just praying everything working because I'm like, when I look at this video later, I need to relive this moment several times. But y'all, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't prepare this. This was gift wrapped by Jesus. Jesus wanted you to get this message. I just came here to get it. That's it. I'm just in position to get it. But I needed that. Because I said, what did I say? Listen, because I can't make this up. This ain't scripted. What did I say on the way here? What did I say on the way here? You was fearful. Yeah. Oh, that's, wow. uh, that's all I said. I said, wow. I said. I said. I was crying on the way here because wow. I was like, I am. I'm. I'm fighting fear and I was like I have nothing to be afraid of all I have to do is shoot my videos and post them they gonna do what they gonna do that's all we have to do as content creators and yet I was still like I was like I got so many videos to do (laughs) I get excited to do what I do why am I crying I was like something ain't clicking something ain't clicking why am I fearful why am I fearful I just don't know but I was like I'm scared of everything I'm scared of who think what who think what I really don't Mm -hmm. care so when I start thinking like that, y'all, I'll be like, I know I got to pray because what something wrong, that's y'all. That's the enemy. Yeah, and I, that's what I said. What did that's I say? Wrong. I said somebody sending something to my house. That's I said, hey, ain't no other way because I was like, baby, I was good. I was up here. I was like, I was fo- And I said, God is setting things up because I returned to my Bible. I was like, I started doing my devotions again. And I said, it's so crazy because people make you feel so uncomfortable about talking about doing devotions. They make it seem like it's a boastful thing and you can't get blessed. In. Well, I wasn't saying this to get blessed anyway. I was saying this because I was seeing that my life was changing when I returned to my word. So maybe somebody else needs to hear it because you're going right. through something and you need to return to right. your word. 
Okay, like I had to hear somebody say, "You need to ask your angels for help." I was like, "You know that's so crazy." I'll be praying to God, and I don't even be asking for help. I just be getting up and going, like I'm gonna get it. It works. The word definitely works. It but works. he owns the house up on the hill. He owns the hill, and he's your daddy. Why you ain't asking? And the cattle on the hill. Don't forget I, I that. I love it, right? <laughs> listen. Don't forget about that. Now. No, and listen, cause we can't forget about the cattle. We're gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god y'all i could not have had a better day a better interview what else you want to tell us i'm good i'm i'm good i i genuinely wanted to encourage someone about that because like i said um the work like i say I, I tell everybody the worst thing you can do is to not do you know what's what's inside of you that unction that feeling that desire um to to do and um you know, we, we sit on gifts all day because he's given us everything that we need. There, it's in our hands. There's nothing that um, we do, that we need that we don't already have. It's just a matter of us tapping into it. Amen. I pray to God y'all really get to hear everything I got to say. Because I know when you move these microphones, they start going, dee, 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 dee. and I don't know if I've been moving my mic the whole time. So now that I'm consciously thinking about it. You okay? <laughs> oh, we gonna see how much y'all heard they from me. Get, they gonna you get gonna get all the hugs because she got her mic to the point where my, I was going like this, and then I was like, "This is my mic. What am I giving you my mic for?" And y'all gonna see. Y'all gonna rewatch this, and y'all gonna be like, "Tiffany's so goofy." How do you how do you get anything done? We don't know, but y'all enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy the show, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to Queen. You sure that's it? Because I really don't want to. Sure. She's like, I'm ready to eat. We told you we was finna eat tonight, and you over here talk. You want to talk all night. It's been a thirty I'm minute break some bread and interview. Talk a little bit more. Child, I'm gonna record that too. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna see y'all later. It has been a wonderful episode of celebrating queens with different things. We are celebrating. It's a she thing, and the queen who presented. It's a she thing. Tell us your name again. Heather Johnson. I don't think so. What was it again? Heather Johnson. And Thank you guys. Yeah. Y'all better never forget the name. What's the, what's the song I'm thinking of? Remember the name. Remember okay. the name. Okay. It's a she thing, and this has been our next episode of Celebrating Queens for Different Things. I love the fact that I could edit everything that I've messed <laughs> up. Jesus loves us all. Yes, Amen. 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 Man, I done moved this mic so many times. We're really going to see if it's I hear okay. anything at all. <laughs> Goodbye. smash that like button and if you love this content you better subscribe because more is coming that said check out these other playlists in the meantime i'll see you guys next time bye